Hello, and welcome back to the Conscious Code series on the Embody Me podcast. I'm your host, Crystal Renee, the soul brand alchemist, and I teach conscious creators and digital business owners how to infuse their human design and gene keys into their soul aligned brand, making sure that they are embodying their soul's purpose and magnetizing those who they are meant to serve. So if that sounds like something that you'd be interested in learning more about, I do have a link below for my group program called Soul Brand Alchemy. I'd highly encourage you to take a look at everything that that program will help you do in creation of your soul aligned brand and business. So with that being said, today we are talking about Human Design Gate 27, and I refer to this gate as the Accountable Nurturer. And in human design, it's called the gate of caring, the gate of nourishing, or the gate of accountability. It is located in the sacral center, moving towards the spleen, in the channel of preservation, which is a design of custodianship, linked to gate 50. And in the gene keys, it's called the food of the gods. And in the I Ching, it's called the corners of the mouth, thunder beneath the mountain. This is in the tropical sign of Taurus and the Vedic sign of Aries. And it's specifically in the Ashwini nakshatra, but the last day is the Bharani nakshatra. So the overall energy of gate 27 you know, embodies a profound nurturing energy centered around caring for and protecting others. So this gate is tribal in nature. And it's strongly oriented toward looking after family, a group, or team members. And it's driven by a deep commitment to preserving the unit through the provision of nourishment and protection. So this gate is all about finding the balance between self-care and caring for others. And the key is to fulfill your own needs in order to tap into the abundant energy requiring to care for others. This energy is especially dedicated to those who are vulnerable such as the sick, young, or those in need. So my son, who is turning seven on April 27th, um, he has Down syndrome. He, I am a special needs mom. He, is, he has this gait as his conscious son, and he is the most caring, nurturing little boy I've ever met in my life. I just love him and his energy so much. And he loves food, okay? That is his passion right and it's so funny that this gate is so linked to food to nourishing you know and in, in the I Ching it's called the corners of the mouth and in the gene keys it's called food of the gods and if you think about a Taurus a tropical Taurus you know they love to eat and cook and all of the things that ground them right so Let's start with the shadow of this gate, which is selfishness. And this shows up as a self-focused tendency that can lead you to prioritize personal gain and comfort over the welfare of others. So if you have a repressive nature or if you're more of an introverted person, this shows up as being self-sacrificing, where you give away your personal power rather than giving it from your heart, you give it without boundaries, and that leads to being taken advantage of afraid of your own shadow. And giving in this way causes you to deplete your own resources and narrow down your own health. Now, in your reactive nature, or if you're an extroverted person, this can show up as being self-centered. That's about giving with an agenda, but not being purely selfless. So you give to others in order to get something back. It's like a political giving, creating an aura of manipulation and distrust. So when you don't get what you want, you can lash out and it appears generous in the beginning and then giving from the mind. And, if, and of course, it's giving from the mind instead of the heart. So you either give too much of yourself being taken advantage of by others or you give with ulterior motives in the shadow. So you also may find that you care excessively for others, which can lead to neglect of your own needs and personal well-being in your shadow. And there's a risk that you may take on responsibility for other people's needs and issues. And this can lead to unnecessary self-sacrifice of proving your worthiness of love and support. 
So in an attempt to care and provide for others, you might fall into patterns of codependency, which prioritize the needs of others over your own in an unhealthy extent. And you might experience feelings of guilt, compromising what is good and right for you. So in your shadow, you might close yourself off from the collective, and that's rooted in a false expectation that it will bring you an end to your self-sacrificing. Like you know that you give so much that you feel if you cut yourself off that you're not going to overgive. But that form of selflessness or that form of selfishness can actually make life more complicated and hinder your personal growth because you are here to give as the nurturer. So it's important to be mindful that you're not it's it's all about finding the balance between um, giving to others and giving to yourself. And that actually leads us to the gift of altruism. And that represents the transform the transformation of your energy from self-centeredness to selflessness. And it shows your capacity to care deeply for others, often placing their needs equal to your own. So in your gift, you demonstrate a strong sense of community and willingness to assist others in need, and this altruistic nature plays a key role in your relationships and contributes to the collective good. And you give without expecting anything in return, reflecting a form of intelligence that values the well-being of others. And you have a very generous attitude toward caring for both nature and other individuals, This inherent desire to nurture and nourish life is a characteristic feature of your approach to the world. You understand the connectedness of all life and demonstrate an unselfish attitude. And that results in you prioritizing the collective well-being over your own individual gain. Your aura is very nurturing. Your presence emits this powerful aura of trust that allows others to feel safe and nurtured in your presence. And this nurturing aura provides a supportive and healing environment for those around you. You also possess strong healing powers with the potential to alleviate disease or sickness. Your nurturing and caring nature is a potent healing gift in itself. You're also very attuned to music. You have a deep connection with music, which serves as a form of nourishment and a way to express and share your love. This affinity for music can further enhance your nurturing abilities And if you think about like what makes you feel at home, it's like food, music, you know, company, being able to care and provide for others. This is what this gate is all about. So you have like this deep love for philanthropy, giving without expecting anything in return. And um, you have a strong instinct to protect the young and the weak. And this relates to your natural propensity for caring and nurturing in all stages of life. And that leads us to the Siddhi, or highest state of frequency of selflessness. And that embodies the ultimate evolution of your energy, where love becomes the fundamental basis basis of your actions. Where you have an inherent yearning for harmony and unification, and this is reflected in your aim to create a nourishing and harmonious environment for all. So while you care deeply for others, you also understand the importance of self-care. You recognize that nurturing others should not come from the expense of your own well-being. And you strive to find a healthy balance between the two. So being completely selfless, giving to others because you know it benefits the, the good of all, ultimately. And how you can use this gate in your business and in your brand is by providing your tribe, your followers, your people, your community with what it is that they need. You know how to nurture them. You know how to provide for them. Um, and making sure that you're not overgiving of yourself, but you're, you're creating a sense of harmony within your community I mean, by knowing what your tribe needs and then providing that to them, nurturing them, nurturing the relationships that you create with potential clients and partners, and creating that safe space for people to come to when they are in need of nourishment. 
And here are some contemplative questions that you can ask yourself if you have this gate active. What obligations do I need to set down in order for me to take better care of myself? And how can I better balance my own needs with the needs of others? Am I taking care of others to prove my worthiness? Or am I doing it because I genuinely want to help? And here are some tips that you can use to further embrace your shadow of selfishness and embody your gifts of altruism and selflessness. Understand and respect your boundaries. Remember it's okay to say no when you need to. Your well-being is as important as the well-being of others that you care for. Seek balance. Find the middle ground between self-care and caring for others. If you're constantly sacrificing your needs for others, it may lead to burnout. Likewise, if you're only focusing on yourself, you might miss out on the joy and fulfillment that comes from caring for others. And examine your motivations. Are you caring for others out of a sense of obligation, guilt, or a need to feel worthy? Well, it can be helpful to understand why you feel the need to care for others, especially if it's leading to self-sacrifice or codependency. And with that being said, that is the beautiful gate 27. Just my son's conscious son, the accountable nurturer. What a beautiful, cuddly, just loving gate. I'm sorry, but I can only think of that whenever I think of this because it's my son. So if you have this gate, I'm sure you're just as amazing as he is. And with that being said, I'll see you guys when the sun transfers or transits into the next human design gate.